What's going on, Jerome's? It is mock draft season. Pro Football Focus's Seth Galina just put out his latest one, and is this spicy? It is Moy Caliente. Who do the Vikings get at 12? Let's dive on in. So number one, Charles Cross, tackle out of Mississippi State, where he's been getting some steam lately. Number one overall pick steam? I don't know. I don't know. Could, could I see him as a first tackle off the board? Maybe, although Evan Neal and Ike Kwanu are just going to be ridiculous. I mean, I, I do like Charles Cross. I think that he is a stud, but at one, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I understand the thinking from Jacksonville. Hey, get your future franchise left tackle to protect, protect Trevor Lawrence's ass, but is it going to be Charles Cross? I don't know. Number two, Lions, Derek Stingley Jr.? Wow. So you're pairing up Stingley with Akuda long term. You're passing up Aiden Hutchinson. I feel like that would go over like a turd in the punch bowl, but it is what it is at this point. Now, hey, if Hutchinson falls out of the top two, do you go get him? <laughs> I'll think about it. Three, Texans, yes. Aiden Hutchinson makes a ton of sense where the Texans need help all over the place, but just getting the number one Ed Rusher in the draft, I mean, you're never going to go wrong here. So yeah, go ahead. Four. The Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 first of two first-round draft picks, taking Evan Neal out of Alabama. If Neal falls to the Jets, I mean, don't even take the full 10 minutes. Just run in that card, protect Zach Wilson. And is Mekhi Becton going to be your long-term left tackle? He's got the potential, but you just got to sync up that work ethic. So if it works out, maybe you move Becton to right tackle, and you got Becton and Neal long-term. That's a nice little pair of bookends. Five. Giants getting after it. Kyle Hamilton, where the Giants, they definitely need help all over the place. And with Dayball, maybe you would think to get him offensive weapon or protect Daniel Jones. But I think Hamilton is just that good of a player. Uh, I think that he's just going to be the enforcer in the middle of that defense. Also a ball hawk. He can do everything, right? So he's just an absolute. I, I, I love Kyle Hamilton, man. Come on. Six. Panthers. So now they could crack the seal on quarterbacks. I mean, are they sold on Sam Darnold? They have their entire choice. Do you take Malik Willis? Would make sense, but Panthers a go and tackle Icky Iquanu. Gonna protect Sam Darnold's ass. So you got Icky and Moten as your bookends. Go ahead. Seven Giants. So they're uh cinching up that offensive line. So getting some help for Danny Dimes. Tyler Linderbaum. Now, seven seems a little bit high for a center, but I mean, if he's the best player on your board, go get him and protect Dan Daniel Jones and see what he can do. Eight. So the Falcons, they get Thibodeau. Like Thibodeau falls this far where all these picks. You can make a case for them to make sense. And Thibodeau sliding, he didn't have the greatest uh, year in 2021. Uh, but betting on potential, betting on the upside, I understand it from the Falcons' point of view. Nine. So, guessing that they don't go quarterback in this spot. They go Sauce Gardner to put opposite uh, Patrick Sertan the second, which would just be gross. Would be disgusting. Automatically, they become one, one of the best young quarterback duos in the league. I, I do love that, man. It's, bit surprising that they, there's no quarterbacks on yet 10 jets so you do you got Ike Kwanu to protect Zach Wilson and now you get Drake London to be his power forward just put it out, out there throw the ball up for Zach Wilson I love it man you got Drake London and also you got Elijah Moore I mean come on you got Davis too let's go let's go 11 now you think that Washington would go quarterback in the spot they don't. Devin Lloyd uh, just stacking up that defense again. Uh, that defense greatly underperformed last year. They, they On paper, they have one of the best D-lines in the league, but no, didn't qu quite get it done. Get yourself the leader, the physical freak on that defense. Devin Lloyd, go ahead. 12. So the Vikings are in an interesting spot where they have their their – choice of all the quarterbacks in this draft and would Kevin O'Connell want his own QB of the future? Is he sold on Cousins? Is he sold on Kelamond? You would have your choice here. Would it be Pickett or Willis or whoever? But no. Going the Greek freak. I am at it at all, man. Here's the write-up. With Daniil Hunter's future in Minnesota a bit uncertain, the Vikings bolster their edge with Carl Laptis. The Greek freak is strong and possesses a great first step. He can bull rush any tackle and is also effective against a run. After Hunter, no Vikings edge defender posted a 65.0 plus grade last season. And I do like Carl Laptis a lot. The Greek freak getting after it. Former four-star recruit back in the day. 6'4", 275. Play both left and right defensive end. Fantastic against the run. 54 pressures, 4.5 sacks, 10 tackles for loss this year. Two forced fumbles. Uh, took one back to the house. And also, look at his true freshman year. Uh, 54 tackles, 17 for loss, seven and a half sacks. Insane. He dealt with the injury in 2020, but yeah, he, he's back getting after it and just 
absolute premier talent. So the Vikings taking the number three edge off the board here. And he really does give me Justin Smith vibes, uh, formerly of the Bengals and the Niners, where he's just a guy who's going to control his sphere. He's going to power rush the tackle. He's also got a little bit of giddy up, a little bit of shimmy, just a man-sized power, taking care of things and shutting it down. Now, if the Vikings hang on to Daniil and they get Carl Car Aftis and DJ Wanham is still in there as a rotational uh, edge rusher, yeah, I, I'm fine with that. But also, you, you're taking Carl Aftis. So, you know, beyond, you know, not taking a wide receiver or a cornerback or a quarterback or a lineman here, uh, you're taking Carl Aftis over a David Ojabo, taking him over a senior bowl star like uh, Jermaine Johnson uh, out of Florida State. But, yeah, I'm fine with it. I, I'm fine with it, man. Where, yeah, it can make cases for other positions, but, yeah, no, uh, if the no, it's a passer and get the passer league. And if you don't like any of the passers or weapons for the passer, you know, go get you someone who's going to put the quarterback on the ground. Browns keep Garrett Wilson in state. I don't know. Baker needs weapons because OBJ didn't work out. Ah. I tried McDuffie uh, out of Washington. He seems like a Raven. I could, I could work out. The Ravens secondary had a lot of issues this year. Eagles. So this is this is what you can do. The luxury of having three first round picks is that you can take a guy like Jameson Williams, who is probably going to miss most of his rookie year with that ACL. But once he gets there, come on, man, come on. Bam, a bam, a bam, a bam. Let's go. 16 Eagles. Woo! How much for a ZJ 16 overall Zion Johnson, the guard that I've loved forever from Boston college. He's coming in. Brandon Brooks is retiring and just plop him in and set it and forget it. Uh, Kelsey's aging out. Move Landon Dickerson over to center. His natural position. Go ahead. 17 Chargers. They're replacing our guy. They're, they're replacing Linval with Jordan Davis. Where I can't be mad. Uh, Linval come home to be a backup. Go ahead. 18 Saints going Chris Olave. Where I'm still shocked that there haven't been any quarterbacks drafted. You would think 100% the Saints would be in on a QB. But it is what it is. Eagles getting to Kobe Dean. I think Nicobe Dean has the leadership skills to be just an absolute star. I think that he would be the Eagles' new Jeremiah Trotter. And I, I love the Eagles draft, man. Uh, Steelers, they should go quarterback. What the, he what the hell is going on out here? But they go Bernard Raymond where, yeah, they definitely need offensive line help. Raymond did himself some big-time favors at the Senior Bowl. Uh, Patriots going Jahan Dotson. Ooh, ooh, I love it, man. Although, Traylon Burks for me is still wide receiver one, and he's fallen too. What can you do? Uh, the Raiders picking up uh, Ebiquete from Penn State. Just another physical freak edge rusher from We Are Penn State. 23, Kyra Alam. Where, uh, there's been a, a handful of mock drafts that have put Alam and the Vikings together at 12. I mean, I believe in his talent. I think that he's an absolute stud as well. But Arizona, they need a lot of help on the cornerback position. Makes sense. Cowboys getting Ojabo. Ooh, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Demarcus Lawrence could leave, but also you still have Randy Gregory and also Micah Parsons is a freak off the edge. But, I mean, getting Ojabo in this spot where he can be a situational guy for a year or two, it just that's gross, man. Uh, Bill's taking uh, Devontae Wyatt. Uh, so, Jordan Davis got a lot of the press, but Wyatt was the one making some big-time plays in the playoff uh, against Michigan and Alabama. Uh, I, I like that fit with Buffalo. 26, Titans going edge here. Uh, so, Bud Dupree. Mm, about that Landry, eh, but Jermaine Johnson second, another absolute stud at the Senior Bowl. I think him and Moya had themselves, uh, in terms of edge rushers, had themselves the best Senior Bowl week. Uh, so getting some more pressure off the edge, even though, why wouldn't you go quarterback here? There hasn't been any quarterbacks in the first round. Damn, 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 damn. Uh, Shakira from Boise State going to the Bucks ahead, ahead of Traylon Burks. What the hell's going on out here? Penning to the Packers. Traylon finally goes to the Dolphins. Uh, Kansas City takes Roger McCreary from Auburn. And then Lewis Sin from um, Georgia goes to the Lions at 31. Kenyon Green to the Bengals. No quarterbacks in the first round. That is kind of crazy. Now, I, uh, again, like I said, this is spicy. Uh, I do not expect this to be the case. I mean, the quarterback tax is real. And even though, by consensus, this is a down quarterback class, uh, I, I think there's going to be at least four. Uh, I think there is going to be at least four quarterbacks taken in the first round, but what can you do here? But uh, like I said, the Vikings at 12 had the choice of all the quarterbacks, but they go Greek freak over a QB or a wide receiver or a cornerback or an offensive lineman, but get it, man. Get it. Man. I, I, I do love Carl Aftis. Uh, but your thoughts on our thoughts on PFF's thoughts. Uh, Seth Galina's latest mock draft, spicy. Let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value.